I feel like I have drank my face off all weekend and I, I haven't. I did not have a sip of anything besides water and Diet Pepsi <laughs> this weekend, but I feel so crappy and not sick, like, you know, but I ate a lot. I ate a lot of foods and I, you know, I ate a lot. I ate a lot. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I just feel so like, oh my gosh, what did I do? We had such a fun weekend though. So it was worth it, but yeah, I don't typically eat like the way I did this weekend anymore. And I really, really feel it. So I've been just like chugging water and now it's time for coffee. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh guys, I want to show you guys how to do a sourdough starter. It's like the number one thing that I get on my channel is how to make a sourdough starter. And I think I get so in my head about making that video because I don't like know the science behind it. And I feel like every video you watch, they know why they're doing it and like what the like benefits are and like what you're capturing in your jar. And like, I don't know any of that stuff. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> But I do know that my bread is amazing and it turns out great and I've kept the starter alive for over a year now. So I know what I'm doing, I just don't know why, Jeremy. I don't know why we do it. So I feel like I just, I just, I'm in my head about it. So I think I'm just going to do it casually, show you how to make a sourdough starter and then you guys can like start one with me and we can do it together and then eventually I'll make a full video start to finish on like the progress of making a starter but I think what I'll do is just like show you exactly how to make the starter and every day in my vlogs I will address the starter and show you where my starter is at so if you want to make one too you can see what mine's doing every day compared to what yours is doing or vice you know I just feel like if I make it one big official video, I'm in my head and it's not getting done because I'm like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know. I don't know why you do it. I don't. I don't. I don't know the science behind it. I know it's healthy for you and I know it's easy as anything once you get started. It is. It's very easy, but I just like, I just don't know other than like it tastes amazing and it works and it you know, it, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, you'll see that in this video. Happy Monday guys. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do a sourdough starter. Okay. I'm going to do it two ways. They're the same way with just two different types of flour. Okay. So the main thing that you need to know about making a sourdough starter is you do not want to use bleached flour because the bleach is going to kill or interfere with all of the natural stuff you're trying to collect in your jar. Your best bet is to use whole wheat flour. You are going to become impatient. You could be the most patient person in the world, but you will become impatient when it comes to your starter. You're just going to want it to like get like come to life. And so you can start baking. Like you will become impatient. Trust me you're going to get a quicker result with whole wheat. You can eventually switch from whole wheat to white if you don't want to be baking with a whole wheat starter. Uh, but I highly recommend using whole wheat flour. But you can also use unbleached all-purpose flour and I'm going to show you both. They're done the exact same way. Just I'm going to show you, you're going to see over the days that the whole wheat one's going to come to life quicker I'm assuming, from my experience, it will. So use unbleached white flour or whole wheat flour. You can also use like rye flour, like different things like that, but I'm just keeping it simple for us, like whole wheat or unbleached white. You pick. You're gonna have quicker results with this and you can switch it to white. So I recommend the whole wheat. I'm gonna zoom you in closer. Yeah, see here, yeah. So you're gonna need jars. I don't see a need of using a big jar when you're just getting started because you don't want to waste flour because in the beginning you cannot use 
uh, whatever you're doing in here. You can't use it in the beginning. I usually use a big guy like this. This is my starter that's over a year old. It has to be fed soon, but see it rose all the way up there and it fell down. So this is an established starter. It's over a year old, but you can see the size difference. You can start with one in a big thing like this or a small one. I'm just gonna do small for right now. And I recommend you just start with a smaller jar, you know? So, let's so we'll just, okay, we'll do this one as whole wheat. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your whole wheat flour. It's very simple, guys. You're gonna be like, is that it? We're gonna do, now these measurements are not set in stone. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to use one fourth of a cup of whole wheat flour, okay? You can use a tablespoon, two tablespoons. Just make sure you know what you're starting with uh, because it's basically equal parts flour and water, except I don't do it that way. <laughs> I'll show you what I do, but so this is going to be hard to get <laughs> a fourth of a thing in here because the rim is not very wide. Okay. I've made a mess, but that's okay. So basically you have a fourth of a cup, pretty close to a fourth of a cup. Whole wheat flour. Now what you're gonna do is, uh, maybe I'll do this one. I'm gonna rinse this off because you don't want to cross contaminate for this experiment. <laughs> because the whole wheat really does come to life faster. So I'd rather So a fourth of a cup of unbleached white flour. Okay, that one went a little bit better. A little bit less of a mess. So you have your white and your whole wheat. Now, you don't have to do both. I'm just showing you both. <laughs> just, just pick one. Now what you're gonna do is you are going to take filtered water. I like to boil water. I'm currently boiling water um, in a teapot, but I like to boil water and then just let it sit, get to room temp, and I just keep it out on my counter. That's how I like to use water. You can use bottled water, but they just say don't use tap. I have used tap multiple times and it's fine, but my water is really good, but you just don't want any sort of chlorine or like chemicals going into your starter. So filtered water, so use bottled water, boiled water, whatever you want. And you're going to most people are gonna tell you to do equal parts. So a fourth cup, since there's a fourth cup in here of flour, fourth cup of liquid. But I like to do a little bit less. So this is a little bit less than a fourth of a cup of water. I'm gonna pour that in. Same with this one. I like my starters thicker. So this is a little bit less than a fourth of a cup. I just uh, find the thicker it is, the better it works for me. Um, so you're gonna see when you're on your sourdough journey, people are gonna tell you all sorts of rules and this and that. You do what you want, okay? It's not that serious. They're gonna tell you don't use metal. You can use metal. It's not, you're not ruining anything. So you're gonna mix up this mixture of flour and water. This is our whole wheat. Give it a good, good mix and it should be very thick, okay? Like super thick, like natural peanut butter or like a super globby, thick. Like this is perfect. This is how thick you want it. Like thick that it's not gonna come running out. Super, super thick. Give it a good mix. Okay. Now we're going to mix the other one, but we're going to use a different knife. Mix this guy up. So it shouldn't be runny, it should be thick. You're going to end up with the best results like this. You can do equal parts and you're going to still end up with great results, but I feel like 
doing it this way, it's just quicker. And you like to get as much air in as possible. So like, to me, I'm like, I'm making a tornado. Like you just wanna make sure the air is getting in there. Okay, so they're both mixed up. Now what you wanna do is you wanna clean up your sides because you're gonna to wanna to see pro what progress you're making here. You don't have to do this, but I really recommend that you do. So I just take a little spatula and I'm just like cleaning up the sides so it's not so gummy looking and gross. Like just kinda of make it so that you can see in. Perfect. Just like that. See, it just looks better than this because you're gonna to wanna to see what progress you're making. I'm gonna do the same with this one. Just gonna scrape down the sides. And the thing about flour and water, when it dries, it becomes quite hard to remove off things. So if you make a mess, clean it right away or else it'll be just become like cement. Okay, that's good enough for right now. I'm just taking a wet paper towel. I'm just kind of like cleaning off the edges. So now you're going to put a loose lid on. Um, actually, I'm probably just gonna use this without a thing on it because you are capturing natural bacteria, I think, and like, this is gonna become gassy. So you don't want a tight lid on this because if the gas has nowhere to go once it's developing, you could risk your jar bursting. So you wanna always make sure you have a lid that can easily move if it needs to and once your set your starter gets established you're going to notice that like it will sometimes you wake up and it'll be overflown and stuff and um if you have it on a tight lid then it the gas has nowhere to go and it will burst so for today i'm just putting a cover over it like that so just make sure you have a a cover that's not airtight that can lift easily if it has to so i'm just putting that on there and now what you wanna do is put an elastic band around so you can see if your starter has moved at all. But I, I can't find an extra elastic band. So I'm just putting washable marker just so I can see where it's at because you wanna be able to monitor if your starter has grown. So that's all you do to start a starter. You're gonna wait 24 hours, and after 24 hours, you're going to do the next step, which I will show you in tomorrow's video, but it's basically, you're just gonna remove half out of the jar, throw it away. You can't use it when you're establishing the starter, you wanna throw it away. So throw away half, but you're gonna see, I, I might not do that, I might do more than half, but you'll see tomorrow. You're gonna to throw away half and then do the same thing, put water and flour in, and that's called your, your feeding. But I'll show you that tomorrow. It's super easy. In about 10 days, you're gonna be able to bake with this. And it's so incredible. So yeah, that's all you do. You wanna put it in a safe, warm area. Um, so I always keep mine on top of the stove. I just have them on the stove here. So some people like to keep them in their oven with the light on. Just make sure they're in a nice area that's not too cold. And then you're gonna put it away and forget about it till tomorrow. So basically what you're doing is trying to capture all of the natural bacteria and stuff that you have in your kitchen already. My starters might take off a little bit quicker than yours because I already have an established starter in the house, I'm, I naturally will have more of that in my air than you might. But if you're someone who bakes a lot or you know that sort of thing, your starter might take off a little bit quicker than someone who doesn't bake a lot because you naturally have all of those 
yeasts and stuff in the air. That's my understanding from, you know, the research I've done over the last year on sourdough. But essentially, in 10 days, roughly, that starter is going to be established enough to rise a loaf of bread. So you're not going to have to use yeast. You're going to um, be able to make a sourdough loaf. But your first few loaves will not be your best. The older your starter gets and how the stronger it is, the more established it is, the better your loaves become. And almost like foolproof, truthfully, once it's established, um, it is a bit of a commitment, but it takes two seconds, you know what I mean? And it's, I was able to keep mine alive for over a year and I've gone on vacations, like I had a death in the family, um, like they, we had a, a year, <laughs> a year and that thing has, once you get it going, they're so durable and you can use it for like pizza crust you can use you can make anything anything you bake you can use sourdough i am not as experienced with that type of stuff i've done pizza dough before and it was incredible i've done pancakes which is incredible from the sourdough starter but i mostly like to make bread so um yeah i'll be able to get you started if you have any questions let me know it is super easy i just don't know the exact science behind it and I will eventually do an official video on how to do it. But for right now, I have to keep it casual because I'm just getting so into my head that I don't know enough to teach, you know? Like, I'm like, how can I teach someone how to do this when I don't know why we do it? But I'll just show you. If you want to get started, yeah, maybe start your starter today and you can follow along with me. I'll show you step by step every day how to do it and what my starter is looking like. And um, yeah, it definitely takes patience. For sure. But if you can hold off like a good, like give yourself a good month of committing to your starter because it might not take off after 10 days. You might have a sluggish starter because maybe your air is just different than mine or maybe your house is colder than mine. It could be anything. Your climate that you live in affects it even. So give it a good month of don't give up on it. Don't throw it out. It's going to get so stinky that it's going to turn you off. It will turn you off and you're gonna be like, I'm not putting that in bread. I know, it gets real bad, real fast, but it's just for a few days because it's trying to, it's, <laughs> this is me, I literally don't know why, but I, I just remember hearing this. It's trying to take the bacteria and everything, it's turning it into gas in your thing and it becomes real stinky. You can, don't, do not use it. Do not try to use a discard recipe with the stinky sourdough starter. I mean, you probably could, I just wouldn't. It's gonna smell like old sour cheese or old sour laundry socks. It's gonna smell sour or like, like milk that's been sitting for months. It's gonna smell really bad especially the whole wheat one that one gets real cheesy just hold just keep with it okay keep with it and i promise you you will like you i promise you will have a starter that you can use and it's not going to smell like that <laughs> it actually becomes to smell nice like bread after a while and um, i can always tell by the smell of my starter where it's at in the process like once it starts to smell like nail polish remover i know it's hungry but it, it becomes like a sweet smell. Um, you're gonna really get to know your starter for sure. It's gonna make you laugh. It's going to make you so frustrated and mad. You're gonna go through it with your starter. Give it a name, get to know it. It's gonna be like, just think if you start it today, you could have an established starter that you could pass down to family members, like people share their starters, pass down their starters. Like when I was starting mine, I was like telling Florence and her boyfriend, like this will one day be all yours. They're like, okay. Cause they were like watching me every day doing the starter. And now it's like, it's great. Like I even have some dehydrated that I have for backup. I, I have some in the fridge as backup. And then I have this one, they're all the same starter. I've just made sure that I never have to start from scratch again. Cause it takes, a lot of patience. So you guys are, I'm going to get impatient. I don't even need them. 
but I'm going to be like, come on. But you're going to go through the rainer with it. Just be aware and just know that. Just know you're going to feel like giving up. You're going to feel like it's gross. It's going to get gross, okay? It's going to get gross. People around you are going to be like, that's gross. What are you doing? Just tell them, don't worry. In a month, you're going to thank me. We're going to have delicious bread. Yeah, so you can use it in about 10 days, but like give yourself a month if it doesn't, you know, give yourself a month, okay? Um, but yeah, I'll be here with you doing it. Maybe I'll try to bake a loaf of bread with it too once it's ready and then we'll see how it does. It'll be fun. Something to do, right guys? So tune in if you're going to make a starter. Let me know in the comments if you're going to start one, okay? It's literally flour and water and that's all. That's all it ever is, is flour and water. So if you have flour and water, if it's not bleached, you can start a starter right now. And you can put it in anything you want. Just and just like you can use a half a cup of flour and a little bit less than half a cup of flour, um, half a cup for water but do, you're just throwing it out in the beginning so don't make a big starter to start you can make it as big as you want eventually like you're going to watch videos and people are going to have these huge tubs of starter do not do that yet okay you can do that eventually but right now we're just trying to start with the correct goodness in the jar whatever it is that you're collecting you're, that's, you're just focusing on that and you don't need a lot to do that. You can grow it overnight. Once it's established, you can grow it to be as big as you want. If you want to cook a thousand loaves tomorrow, you'll be able to do that with that starter. But um, just, we're going to start small because it's just a lot of waste in the beginning. So anyway, I hope that all made sense. Um, leave a comment. Let me know if you're doing a starter and if you have any questions, okay, I will be in the comments answering and then any questions, maybe I'll answer in on the video tomorrow. Um, and tomorrow's Tuesday dinner guys. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, I'm making the lasagna because like, you know, you guys know I had to cancel last week because of COVID. Well, um, I'm going to make the lasagna again. We're going to have that, but I'm not doing the apple pie because we just finished that apple pie and you think, I don't want to see another apple pie for a long time. Like I'm like, okay, I've made like three apple pies in a month. Like we, we need to do something else. So I have all those blueberries that Trevor's friend gave us from his farm and I have, I made jam with some of them and then I have a bunch frozen so I think I'm gonna make a brew a blueberry uh crumble is that what it's called not a cobbler but a crisp sorry a blueberry crisp I'm gonna make that but I'm gonna make it tomorrow I'm not doing that tonight and the drink of the day I finally I just kept it in the fridge it's been in the fridge all week I'm so excited to show you guys I cannot wait to try it I cannot wait to like it just looks so cool and I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is. Um, so I'm excited. So stay tuned. Tomorrow's going to be a good, a good day. We have the Tuesday dinner and then we'll address the sourdough and yeah, it's going to be a good week. I just feel like, I can't believe how like hungover I feel. That's, that's show, look at my hair. That shows you what like sugar and crap can do to you when you have cleansed yourself from that and when you bring it back in I am like I literally feel like I drank all night <laughs> I promise I haven't look at me okay I'm gonna watch some YouTube and finish folding my laundry I didn't show you just my new tablecloth on the table I think it looks nice nice fall tablecloth so I just made this I'll show you to you guys another day on how to do it but I'm hoping it turns out. It seemed like, it seemed off. <laughs> so we'll see. Mm. Well, it doesn't look too bad. It still has another five minutes. Um, it just seemed really easy. I don't know. It just seemed, well, this is the recipe here. If you can screenshot that if you want. And then the, those are the instructions here. But yeah, I'll show it to you in another video how to do it. Uh, I don't know if I did it right or not, but yeah, that's what we got. And tonight, guess what we're having for supper? Spaghetti! This is what it looks like. Uh, I put the honey butter on it. Oh, it, it looks actually good. I was doubting the process, but 
I'll let you know how it is. It's crumbly. Very crumbly. But let's try it. Mmm. My, my face is flush. I was cleaning the bathroom. I will 100% make that again. That's really, really good. I'll show you this next time I make it. It's weird because you have to make it with club soda and stuff. I don't know. I was kind of like, this is so weird, but it's good. Wow. Okay, guys, before I end this vlog, I want to show you how the starter's doing on day one. You can already tell that my whole wheat starter is doing a little tiny bit of rising. Like it's a little bit over the line and the bleach or the, not the bleach, the, the unbleached white flower is the exact same. And from my experience, this will take longer than this. So if you want to really kick up your starter, start with whole wheat. Just trust me on that. But um, yeah, you can already see it's risen a little bit. So anyway, I will... I just wanted to show you in case you were wondering where mine's at at the um it's been about nine hours so this is the nine hour mark from making them i'm going to unpack my makeup from the weekend i just had makeup wipes in there and literally mascara brow stuff and uh i didn't actually end up wearing this but i brought this then some brushes. That's all I brought with me when I was away. But yeah, I'm excited for you guys to start a starter if that's something you're wanting to do. I'm really excited about it. Um, and I've been like peeking in the kitchen a lot today, staring at my new little starters. It's been so long since I've felt like that. Like mine, I still haven't fed yet. The one I showed you this morning. I'm going to feed it right before bed tonight. And in the morning, it'll be really big and bubbly. So I can show you that, like what an established one once it's like that is like peak what it looks like anyway uh that biscuit loaf thing i made was really good i know i sh told you guys it was good but like florence's boyfriend came over he loved it florence loved it alex hasn't tried it trevor like thinks it's the greatest thing he's like keep making it this is so good like he just was like eating it like it was chips like it's there's only a couple little slices left of it so I will share that with you guys sometime soon because I didn't share it today because I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> and and, tr and it was just weird because you make it with club soda and I'm like, and it was all like foaming up and I was like, what am, what am I making? <laughs> but it was really good. So it's quite possibly the easiest thing I've made. So our little gingerbread house, you need to try this because I know for sure you will absolutely scream and love this recipe and you will find it is easy because I know you don't like doing breads that have a lot of rising time and a lot of kneading and a lot of like the whole day like I know that's not your thing this is very much you just mix everything put it in a thing and bake it like there's no kneading you barely mix it you just mix it so that there's no wet or no dry ingredients left and then you pop like it was just weird i was like this does not seem like it's going to turn out but it did and it was really good so i will share that with you guys um i'll have the recipe in here but i'll show you me making it soon but tomorrow's tuesday dinner and i'm so excited and our crowd tomorrow is going to be a little bit smaller but that's okay um oh if you ever see that window that's i feel like that looks like it's all that's leaves leaves from outside they just pile up right there because it's the basement um but yeah, we have a smaller crowd coming tomorrow, but it's it's okay. Yeah, it's actually going to be quite a small crowd tomorrow, but that's okay. I still go all out no matter if one person comes or if it's just the four of us or what. Like, it's I'm still going all out for tomorrow. I can't wait to show you guys the drink of the week. It's so good. Um, but I wanted to end this video with a huge thank you, okay? A huge, huge thank you to all seven thousand of you guys i have reached seven thousand subscribers today and hopefully i'm still at seven thousand but if you make youtube videos you know like sometimes you'll gain like 10 subscribers in a day but lose two you know what i mean or you'll gain five lose one gain 100 lose 20 like it's just 
the way it goes. You you lose I basically lose a subscriber every day or every other day. Like it's it's just the way it goes. So hopefully cuz I'm like re literally at 7,000, like not 7,001, like I'm at like 7,000. So if someone unsubscribes, I'm back down to 6,000 and something. But we'll we'll get back there if if it's not currently still at 7,000, but thank you. Thank you so much for uh being here. You guys have I've said it to you before, but I can't say it enough. Like you guys have helped me walk through the hardest season of my entire life, navigate feelings I've never felt before, validated feelings I've never felt before, held my hand and just truly like, let me just show up as I could and show up as what felt helpful to me, even if it was hard sometimes to watch. Like, I don't like looking back on a lot of the videos from the past year, especially like Vlogmas last year. It's hard, it's hard. Um, and I just really appreciate you all sticking with me through this really hard, hard thing that I've walked through, like the death of my dad. Um, but also thank you for being here, for helping me learn and learning from me, like letting me be a little teacher, like my childhood dreams of being a teacher. Have we all wanted to be a teacher? I feel like we've all went through that stage where we wanted to be a teacher. I feel like there was like a year where I was like, I'm going to be a teacher. Um, but thank you for just allowing me to share what I know and for teaching me what you know and for being a friend like truthfully like you guys have been amazing I've been on this platform for 10 years it's a slow climb it's a slow growing thing I am not a channel that has blown up overnight I'm very <laughs> my growth is very organic and slow the friendship and the community and the safe place to land when I need it has been everything in my life and I cannot thank you enough. So whether you're here for a little while or you've been here for day one or you're thinking of unsubscribing, I thank you. Like, I really appreciate you guys seeing something in me enough to hit that subscribe button 7,000 times that happened. And I am so, so grateful. And I could never let you know how much you guys mean to me like there's no words to describe that and I hope you guys know that like I am here for the long run whether there's a paycheck or no paycheck or crappy quality like I'll vlog on a potato I will if it'll upload I'll do it I don't buy fancy equipment like my phone is nice but like I don't have lighting or microphones and that like I just show up as I am I don't overcomplicate it. I try to make it just as easy as possible so I can show up here every day in a way that feels organic and natural to me. And if we laugh along the way, we do. If we cry, we do. If we learn something, we do. But we're always here for each other. I'm always here. I am not going anywhere. Uh, I know a lot of creators have jumped ship onto the short form thing and that breaks my heart. It does because I am a long form girly. I don't like to to um watch short form i don't like I, I just love like the longer the video the better if someone uploads an hour video i'm like oh my gosh yes like i love it so anyway i just want to say thank you that's what i'm trying to say thank you thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here thank you to all the new subscribers the og subscribers and everyone in between i cannot thank you enough for having my videos as part of your daily routine, life, like checking, or just even if you're just popping in for a video here and there, if you've never commented before, or if you comment every video, if we've met in person, or if you've seen me and not said hi, like I just thank you. Thank you to every single person who has ever hit subscribe on my channel. I thank you so, 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 so much. And even though I say it all the time, it is not about the numbers. It's really not. I'd be here if there was three people or if there was a hundred thousand people like I am here. And um, it's just cool to see the number. It's cool to hit that. Like I didn't think I'd ever hit that. And it's just cool. So I think it's worth the acknowledgement and I think it's worth a thank you. And that's all I got. But I hope you guys are well and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Thanks guys. Good night. Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other I honestly don't know And tell me how we messed up Drifting away from each other